Hello, this is the extraordinary Rayman because my opinion is just that interesting. All right, I'm gonna move away from the uh, politics for a while because apparently nobody likes what I have to say when it comes to politics. So I'll move on to something else I care about: comic books and movies, which is probably what I'm gonna talk about from now on. Even though there's a lot of stuff I really want to talk about, but no one cares about those videos. And the people who do watch them just make fun of me, insult me. They don't like to say what they don't like about me. They use cookie cutter arguments, bumper sticker slogans, strawman arguments. They use the wall defense and stuff like that. Anyway, let's get on. I'm going to here to talk about Superman Returns. Now, in case you can't tell, I freaking love Superman. I have Superman shirt. I, rem I'm, I have a moral standing in my life based on Superman. What would Superman do? Yeah, what would Jesus do? But it's uh, it's also what would Superman do for a, a, a practical sense. I don't, I don't worship him or, or anything like that. I have a Superman key. Um, I have all I, my favorite books to read are Superman books. I don't care who it's by. Uh, I even only date girls named Lois. Anywho. I love Superman. And to any of you who know me, surprisingly, actually, before... I've only loved Superman for a couple years now. Like, before I was, um... Like, 16 or so, I actually really hated Superman. I thought he was for all the generic reasons. He's too powerful! He's too good! All that... Baloney that people throw out for not liking... Superman, because they're too... Uh... Simple. They like... They need their, their grittiness, and they need their storylines to be easy and whatever I love Superman I it actually started with Superman Returns which is unbelievable before Superman Returns came out I really didn't care I watched Smallville a lot but I and I grew up with the cartoon but I grew up with Spider-Man the cartoon I grew up with the Batman animated television show I grew up with Superman but he just wasn't my guy the way spider-man was spider-man that's different i absolutely was head over heels for spider-man but then superman returns came out and i was really i got really excited about this movie i had grown up with the richard donner movies and i actually really liked those especially as i got older because i could appreciate them not being all about fighting but the mythology that that movie set up for uh krypton and establishing Superman as a Christ-like figure. My, I love the line they chose for Superman Returns. The, uh, they can be a great people, Kyle, and if they wish to be. They only lack the light to show the way. For this reason, above all, I have something new. For this reason, above all, their capacity for good, I have something new, my only son. That's, like, Christ-like, and it really, really gets to me. I find it really, really, really cool that they do that in the Richard Donner movie. And then 2 came out, and they did stupid stuff in 3 and 4, and progressively got terrible. But that's another story. Superman Returns came out, and I heard a lot of people talk about it being basically the Richard Donner one, but with um, better special effects. Alright, let's do this! And so, with actually most of my family, um, a couple years ago, whenever Superman Returns came out, I want to say 2005... I wanted to do 2005. Um, we all went to see Superman Returns. And to be honest, when the movie was done, I was honestly in awe. That was the... Sorry, 2006. That was the moment where I became the Superman fan that I am today. I loved this character who has the weight of the world on his shoulders, but is really just a normal human being. And I love the special effects. I love the idea of Superman, you know, almost giving his life for humanity. However, as time went on and my excitement of Superman wore off, just for that movie, I started to notice some glaring, glaring things with that movie. And that's why I'm here today. Five minutes into the video, I finally get to the point. I apologize for that, but you needed a little backstory. At least I need to get it out. And I'm going to find this review very therapeutic for me. My psychologist, I shrink, said I should do this or else my head will explode. 
So, here we are. Superman Returns. Alright. Now, I like the idea that they have, um, it's basically set in the same universe, the same timeline as the Richard Donner movies, because the Richard Donner movies, one and some of two, a lot of two, are fantastic in setting up uh, a live-action Superman. We also get the, um, the Superman theme, which is, like all of John Lennon's music, perfect. The issue with this comes into play... Offhand, I think of two things wrong. One, Lex Luthor. And two, being a lot of continuity things. And in comic books, you always are going to have continuity issues. The continuity problems come in Lois knowing or not knowing who Superman is. It's played off like she doesn't. She likely does not know who Superman is. Even though uh, the at the movie guys, was it um Richard Roper and Roger Ebert? They claim it's obvious that she knows who he is. No, it's not, because she obviously doesn't. She's talking to Clark, and at one point, about Superman. Like, she doesn't know. Then how does she explain where Jason, her son, came from? They had sex in Superman 2. How does she know where this kid came from? Because the kid is, like, I think supposed to be five, and Superman's been gone for five years. How long has she been involved with him? Richard White, her now boyfriend. Has she been involved with him for five years? I seriously doubt that because she would have had sex with him before she knew him. Because Superman left five years ago and seemed surprised when this new guy showed up in her life when he got back. So there's an extreme problem with continuity there. Not only that, I don't think the little kid plays a lot of part, plays a good enough part in the movie to be anywhere near important. He's an adorable little kid, and it's fascinating for there to be a son of Superman and how he does the lines at the end, uh, son becomes father, father becomes a son. But he plays no point in the story. He pushes the piano at that guy at one point to save Lois. But then he doesn't seem to be able to do any more spectacular feats. He, uh, I, I don't think he was utilized or important. You take him out, and you pretty much have most of the same story. Now, Richard White, I think, is a fantastic idea to have in the story because it's Lois settling down after her dream man has gone on to bigger, better things. She has had to settle down, come to grips with reality, and marry a real man. And he's a good guy. He's James Mars, and he's pretty cool. But like a lot of things in that movie nothing is just stretched enough it's there it's not played off of not played with it's not utilized it's just in the story it's an idea that i'm coming up with but not necessarily anybody else i mean they have it in there for conflict to annoy superman but they don't really do a lot of uh as my brother called it measuring up they just there are like one or two scenes, but that's near the end where they're they're both trying to save Lois and get out of there, and they don't care. So I think he could have done been done better, been done better. But that's a lame, lame thing to say. And I see I'll hear a lot of people say that things in a movie could have been done better, and I really hate when people say that because it's just them not being able to come up with a real explanation. So I think it's good. I like that. I like Richard. Lex Luthor. Lex Luthor is Superman's Joker, pretty much. We've had him for three movies. The problem with this is none of them have been done right. He's had himself, his brilliant criminal mind, and a group of like two people, some idiot psychic and a chick. And somehow he's been able to come up with plans that have been able to bring Superman to his knees every time. And it makes no sense whatsoever, ever. Four, maybe, because he had a super bean fighting Superman. But in this one, I like it because he's got, like, a team of guys this time. I have no reason to believe that these guys are experts at any sort, at anything. But he's got a team of guys, so I can imagine them, like, when they go to steal that machine that is designed to shoot kryptonite spears into the ocean. He has a team of guys set up to where he, I can actually see him um, uh, being able to formulate plans and bring them to uh, make them happen um, in this one. But, okay, 
I'm gonna stop right here because I don't want my video to be cut off like it was last time. I'm gonna stop this. I'm gonna talk about Lex Luthor.